Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Major M. James Jolly from Area Military Health Formation in Pretoria. On behalf of the Chief of the South African National Defense Force, General Soli Zakaria Shoke, SBS, MMS, OMS, we bid you a hearty welcome to this farewell parade in Northern Cape. The functionary is the Chief of the South African National Defense Force, General Soli Zakaria Shoke. We would like to bring under your attention the following military procedures, customs, and traditions during the parade. On arrival of the functionary, Chief of the South African National Defense Force, General S.Z. Shoke, you are requested to stand. The arrival of the functionary will be announced. On arrival of the functionary, General S.Z. Shoke, all spectators are requested to stand and remain standing until completion of the general salute. The Occupational Health and Safety Team would like to remind everyone of the following COVID-19 safety protocols. Wear your mask at all times, sanitize your hands regularly, keep social distancing. If you experience any flu-related symptoms, please report to the medical facility immediately. You are also reminded to throw away your used mask at the allocated red plastic bins. They urge everyone to be safe and be responsible. During the reading of the Code of Conduct for Uniform Members of the South African National Defense Force, all spectators are requested to remain standing. Civilian members may be seated during the reading of the Code of Conduct. The free fallers consist of members from the following units. 44 Parachute Regiment, School for Military Health Training, 500 Squadron, 101 Air Supply Unit, and 7 Medical Battalion Group. The DZ Safety Officer is Lieutenant Colonel M.G. Manamela, and the Ridger is Sergeant N.L. Kongo. The free followers will be dropping off from the 212 CASA aircraft from 44 Squadron Waterkloof Air Force Base. Comprising with the air crew, which is Commander Major M. N. Green, the co-pilot K. T. B. Demande, and the GLO Major D. Mahano. During scripture reading and prayer, on the command of caps by the guard commander, uniform members are to remove their headdress, and the civilian male members are to remove their hats. You are requested to replace the headdress and hats on the command on caps by the guard commander. You are also requested to remain seated for the duration of the parade and until the podium group has withdrawn. The colors are from South African Army and the South African Military Health Service and are under the command and control of Chief Warrant Officer M.R. Magondo from One Military Hospital. The Guard of Honor consists of four sections, which are the South African Army, South African Navy, and the South African Military Health Service. The Guard Commander is Lieutenant Colonel N.J. Sam from Area Military Health Formation, and the second in command is Lieutenant D. Major from the South African Navy. The Guard Sergeant Major is Warrant Officer Class 2 B. Arnoster from Military Health Training Formation. The Chaplain is the Chaplain General Brigadier General Reverend M. A. Jamangile. The band on parade is the South African Military Health Service Band under the Drum Major Staff Sergeant M. T. Dow. The Code of Conduct for uniform members of the South African National Defense Force will be read by Petty Officer T. D. Sefara from South African Navy. Ladies and gentlemen, you are requested to reserve your applause until the end of the address of General S. Z. Shoke. Ladies and gentlemen, you are requested to switch off your cell phones for the duration of the parade. Please switch off your cell phones now. Please refrain from smoking for the duration of the parade. Invited guests are reminded to join the Chief of the South African National Defense Force, General Shoke, for refreshments which will be held at the Jack Hinden Officers' Mess. Ablution facilities for males and females are at the side of the western direction of the pavilion. In case of any emergency, medical assistance will be provided by Area Military Health Service at Area Military Health Unit Northern Cape. We trust that you will enjoy the parade with us. I thank you.
Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the arrival of the Chief of the South African National Defense Force, General Soli Zakaria Shoke. Uniform members remain standing and civilian members may be seated. Petty Officer T.D. Safara will now read the Code of Conduct for uniform members of the South African National Defence Force. Code of Conduct for uniform members of the South African National Defence Force. I pledge to serve and defend my country and its people in accordance with the Constitution and the law, and with honor, dignity, courage, and integrity. I serve in the SNDF with loyalty and pride as a citizen and a volunteer. I respect the democratic political process and civil control of the SNDF. I will not advance or harm the interest of any political party or organization. I accept personal responsibility for my actions. I will obey all lawful commands and respect all superiors. I will refuse to obey an obviously illegal order. I will carry out my mission with courage and assist my comrade in arms even at the risk of my own life. I will treat all people fairly and respect their rights and dignity at all times, regardless of race, ethnicity, religion, gender, disability, culture, language or sexual orientation. I will respect and support subordinates and treat them fairly. I will not abuse my authority, position, or public funds for personal gain, political motive, or any other reason. I will report criminal activity, corruption, and miscon misconduct to the appropriate authority. I will strive to improve the capabilities of the SNDF by maintaining discipline, safeguarding property, developing skills and knowledge and performing my duties diligently and professionally. Please be seated. As we are observing now, ladies and gentlemen, are the free fallers jumping from the CASA 212 aircraft to hand over the scroll to the Chief of the South African National Defense Force. The free fallers were holding the South African flag, the Defense Force flag, the South African Army flag, South African Air Force flag, South African Navy flag, the SAMS flag, and the Defense Legal flag, 
and the 44 parachute regiment flag, including the 7 medical battalion flag. Left. What time? Three Three 
Attention! Brigadier General Reverend M. A. Jamangile will now lead us in scripture reading and prayer. We respect all expressions of faith that are with us. Now that we have just experienced a safe free fall of the free fallers, hear what the Lord says. Put on God's armor now. Then when the evil day comes, you will be able to resist the enemy's attacks. And after fighting to the end, you will stand hold your ground. So stand ready with truth as a belt tight around your waist, with righteousness as your breastplate and as your shoes the readiness to announce the good news of peace. At all times, carry faith as a shield, for with it, you will be able to put out all the burning arrows shot by the evil one. Accept salvation as the helmet and the word of God as the sword. Do all this in prayer, asking God's help. Let us pray. We bow down our heads at this hour of the time, Heavenly Father, with greatest humility and thanksgiving. We thank you for all the free and safe incidents we thank you, Heavenly Father, for who you are and who we are unto you. And now, as I am about to commend this parade unto your throne of grace, the commander of our armed forces is about to speak. May we please open our hearts, minds, and souls above all our ears. All this we ask in your holy name, and may all the people of God say amen. General S.Z. Shoke will now inspect the God.
We request General S.Z. Shoko to address the call. Good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you. Uh, let me first acknowledge the Surgeon General and his command council and the entire team that has made it possible for this parade to be organized. And then I'll also like to organize, uh, acknowledge the generals present here and flag officers, senior officers, non-commissioned officers, uh, ladies and gentlemen. And most importantly, I'll also like to acknowledge men and women who make this defense force tick, those who are the sharp, uh, the sharp end. I'm talking here about ordinary soldiers, both here on the parade ground and those who are watching us virtually. I'm sure by now all of you are aware that the president has announced changes in the leadership of the South African National Defense Force. And then one of those changes it is in the post of the Chief of the South African National Defense Force. As you all might be all aware that the current Chief of the South African National Defense Force has long reached sell by due date. And then he's now paving way for the new incumbent who unfortunately, due to the short duration that we have in instituting the ending and taking an over, he could not be with us presently here today. That is the current chief of joint operations, Lieutenant General Mapsanya, who will be assuming his duties as of the 1st of June, 2021. And then there will be a formal ending and taking over parade and including a swearing in ceremony where he will be taking the sword and also the oath of office in front of the president and the people of South Africa. That will be on the 28th of May 2021 in Pretoria. There are also changes in the post of uh, joint operations where Major General Sangweni, who is currently the Joint Operations Environment will be taking over the post of Chief Joint Operations as of the 1st of June, taking over from General Mapsanya. As you are aware that now he is also busy 
with the handing over process with General, uh, Major General Sangwin. And it's also unfortunately, he must also go and hand over the painting to General Officer Commanding Infantry Formation, who, when he was promoted to the post of a Lieutenant General, he could not hand over because the incumbent was outside the country with UN missions abroad. Then there's also the new appointment in the Air Force, as you might be aware of, head of, is that uh, Lieutenant General Mbambo has now replaced Lieutenant General Msimang who retired in September last year. He has taken over the post of Chief of the Air Force as of the 1st of May. Then there's also the post of Chief of Defense Intelligence. Where Major General Mkagato will be replacing Lieutenant General Nyembe, who also retires on the 31st of May. Major General Mkagato will become the Chief of Defense Intelligence as of the 1st of June 2021 and be promoted to a rank of a Lieutenant General and the first female to ascend to the level of the Lieutenant General in the South African National Defense Force and a competent female. Then there is a post of a Sergeant General of the South African National Defense Force, where the current Sergeant General, who, like me, has long passed cell by due date, will be also retiring end of October, and then he will be replaced by Major General Mapa, who will be promoted to a rank of a Lieutenant General as of the 1st of November. Normally, appointment of, appointments of this nature, they get announced three months or six months in advance so that you can afford the incumbent time to take people to the units and do stock taking and a whole range of activities that are involved and also visit the units all over the country. But due to the duration that we have between now and my retiring from uniform we felt that actually we should combine some of these activities in one and it be province by province. And we have also taken into consideration that these changes are taking place when the world is facing a serious challenge. fighting the invisible enemy called COVID. We therefore had to be sensitive and ensure that while we conduct our business, but we should also take into consideration that 
we do it within the necessary COVID regulations. So it is not the way that we normally would have allowed to conduct these parades, but we've got to accept the reality that we find ourselves in. When members of the Military Command Council decided that uh, due to COVID, I could not have my annual communication with commanders of the entire National Defense Force. Therefore, I must call the commanders and address my commanders and bid them farewell. But I felt that, yes, indeed, it would be appropriate for me to engage with the commander. As we speak, or as I speak with you now on this parade, these are the people who have been at a sharp end in ensuring that they save lives in combating the scourge of COVID that is busy ravaging our country and the entire world. They did that selflessly and sacrificing their lives so that they can save the lives of their fellow South Africans. When there are fires in the Western Cape, these are the men and women who will be always at the forefront to ensure that they help the province to deal with those fires. When there are floods, they're the ones that are at the forefront. When there are strikes, they're the ones who go to hospitals and save lives in our hospitals. Whenever there's any challenge, whether in our continent and we have been called to go and assist in international missions, our soldiers are always there. And they always perform their duties diligently and in, in line with the code of conduct that has just been read here before we started with these proceedings. So these are the people that we are indebted to as a nation for they do good for this country. And these are the people that sometimes they get viciously criticized if they make an error. And I always believe that those who don't work will never make mistakes. It's only people who work that will make mistakes. Yes, we do have our own mistakes there and there, but as far as I'm concerned, 99.9% that these members of the Defense Force do is good. And then it is only that 0.1% that sometimes our critics focus on and they want to paint a picture that does not resemble this National Defense Force. I'd like to say to you, men and women on parade and all over the units here in the Northern Cape, you should pride yourself and be proud 
of the service, service that we render to our people and this country. You are a different breed of people. And what distinguishes you from the rest of society is that in your job description, although it might not be written in black and white, death is part of our job description. And that's what distinguishes a soldier from any ordinary men and women in our society. We pay a supreme sacrifice to ensure that there's peace and stability in our country, peace and stability in our continent. Because it is only through peace, stability and tranquility that this country can develop. And therefore it is incumbent upon all of us yeah, who understand the importance of security that we should begin to teach our people to appreciate men and women in uniform because the success of our economy and of our society and our people is dependent on you providing adequate security. And we have done that under difficult and trying times. We have done that with the meager resources, the budget that is going down every day. Yes, we do understand that the world is facing economic crisis, and South Africa is not an exception. But we should also equally be very careful that as a nation, we should not compromise the security of our country and our people. Because there's no investor who will come and invest his money in an environment that is not secured. So we should begin to think, to try to put, find a balance in ensuring that while if we address other social ills that our country is facing, we should also take into consideration that they can also survive in a secure environment. So, fellow officers, with the challenges that the have raised, we should also accept that it is not going to be business as usual. We should begin to become innovative. We should begin now to see how can we survive with those meager resources that are at our disposal. And we need to preserve the little that we have if we're to survive. We need to preserve the little that we have and guard our assets jealously. Because uh, we must also admit that in our midst, we do have people who don't have a conscience. People who don't have a who do steal some of the little resources that we have. People who are selfish, who are being influenced by criminals out there, but who are equally criminals. And these are the people that we need really to get rid of in our midst. Because they don't display the discipline that is expected out of soldiers as it is enshrined in our constitution that this institution the SNDF must be managed and be administered in a disciplined manner. Because fellow officers, if truth is to be said, we are the only institution that is mandated 
to carry instruments of war, as some of them are displayed here. And therefore, we cannot afford to have people who don't have discipline, people who steal assets of state, people who, by their conduct, they erode the confidence that our people have in the defense force. Because I must say, and I'm saying it in public, and I'm sure you bear testimony to that, that South Africans, they've got more confidence in the National Defense Force than any other institution when it comes to matters of national security. And it is because they've got that confidence because of the manner in which we have conducted ourselves and the good that we have done. There it might not be reported in the media, but people can see the good that we do. And from the platform where I sit, I must also acknowledge the good that we do and the good that we have done while I was still in charge. Or while I'm still in charge, because I'm still in charge. So, uh, my message today to you here in the Northern Cape, allow me to say, as a South African National Defense Force, when people talk of a rainbow nation and the rainbow success, this is the proper rainbow nation and this is a success story, the rainbow success. This institution, it is composed of former seven or former opposing forces, but people who had the interests of this country at heart and the people at heart, they rose above their differences and they served our country very well. And it is important, I would like to say, keep it that way, rise above petty party politics, rise above your own interests and serve your country and your people. 57 million people, over 57 million, they rely on us for their safety. And we should not disappoint them. And we can only do that when they see that we are disciplined and we conduct ourselves in a manner that is beyond the approach. With those few words, I would like to say, I acknowledge the good that you are doing, the good that some in our midst do not want to acknowledge, but ignore them and continue doing good for our society and mankind. I thank you. Invited guests are reminded of the refreshments at Jack Hinden, Officer's Mess. Please remain seated until the guard has marched off. We request members to be seated until the guard is off.